the webinar go live the next day? Two p.m. Yeah. Five minutes. It's my design powered by the artificial intelligence. We will start in a few minutes. We have a chat here. I'm Dr. Jogo Alves. I'm the clinical content specialist at GST at Smileify. And I would like to know more about you. Um, so tell me here on the chat, where are you from? How many years of practice do you have? Do you use digital my design in your practice? Let's talk a bit. We'll be back soon. Dr. Gustavo from Guatemala, Dr. Irvin. Hello, everybody. Netherlands, perfect. You know, this is what I love about, you know, being a digital dentist is that you can get connected with everybody. Dr. Tara, so glad to see you again. So just so you guys know, um, Smileify is the newest platform in town. So if you haven't downloaded the application yet, you can download right now on your iPad, iPhone, and MacBook, right? So you can start your 14 day trial. We, will be, we are very excited to have you here. Uh, we have Ralph George today. He will be showing all the features, all the capabilities of this amazing software and what you can do and beyond with digital technology. Hello, everyone. Hi, and welcome. So we threw these, uh, these, these webinar, like last minute we get, we have um, almost 400 doctors registered all over the world. Uh, and we are very glad to know that, we know that um, you guys are very excited, you know, to get a, 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 an easier solution in your practice, you know, something that you can design and actually see the final result on your patients, uh, final restorations. So today is the day for you to get started with your 14 days trial using this Myofi technology. Dr. Francis from Philippines. Hi, Dr. Tui. All right, you guys, once again, welcome to our Myofi webinar where we will show you what is going on in the world of digital dentistry. We are a pioneer in 3D design on all platforms, iPad, iPhone, and MacBook. Again, if you haven't downloaded the app, go to your app store and start your 14 day trial. I'm Dr. Diogo Alves. I'm the clinical content specialist here at, at uh, Smilefy, QL, and uh, also uh, my specialty uh, is in implantology and pro processes. I have a practice in Brazil, and I'm very thankful for being part of this uh, digital movement. Today, I have here Ralph George, who is our founder and creator of Smileify. Ralph, how are you doing today? Tell us everything. Good. Very, very good. Very excited to uh, present you new stuff, you know? Perfect. So just to give you guys a summary of what we will be showing you guys today, we will show you what you can deliver to your patients using iPhone, iPad, and MacBook. The digital patient, which basically is a 3D version of your patient's head where you will be able to better visualize the patient's soft and hard tissues combined. And of course, give your patient a better experience. Smile design powered by artificial intelligence, available on your iPhone, iPad, and MacBook. 
And I will show you guys later here live with a real patient, how quick it is now to do SMI designs to your patients. CBCT viewer, which is also coming up on our coming version. And a 3D planning where you will be able to design your smiles using all of your patients' files in that digital head, which gives you much more accuracy, gives, gives you much more predictability to your final restorations prior to actually performing it. So here we have AI is my design, the digital patient, the 3D planning, and CBCT viewer. So Ralph, tell us what's up, what's good, okay. what's happening in this amazing world right now. Hi. So, okay, let's, um, let's start with one of, I think, one of the most important um, changes in the, in the workflow and in, in our, it's, it's a paradigm, paradigm, paradigm shift um, in, uh, in the way we manage the files and work with the files, right? That's, I think that's one of the biggest and most important change and uh, that's gonna ch uh, uh, change a lot how we design smiles and how we proceed with the designing process. So let me um, share with you my screen and uh, I'm gonna go to the menu. I'm gonna go to the menu and as you can see in the menu, we do have uh, the patient digitalization as, um, as a feature, right? But I don't think that our days, the patient digitalization is really valuable. Having uh, digital records of the patient is beautiful, but also you can have a folder in your Dropbox and your folder in Dropbox has also the patient files and it, it doesn't help you at all when you want to design a smile. The big change is when you have the patient digitalization and you add to the files calibration, then you get the digital version of your patient that you can access with one click and having the digital um, version of your patient, you can study, you can check every single detail of the situation of the patient and uh, make decisions, the right decision when you design the smiles. So let me show you an example of a digital patient. Um, I'm gonna, maybe this one. So you remember from our old app, we do have the case management uh, screen where we have all the projects for our patients. So we have the digital files of the patient. We have the files calibration project where we uh, calibrate all the layers of different uh, of different files, and then we get the digital patient. Everything what we are gonna do inside the app, we are gonna only work with the digital patient because it makes it so easy for you to have the digital head of the patient and to uh, create designs without ever uh, worrying about the calibration and all the files that you have, and. Um, that changes the whole way we analyze the project, we analyze the, um, the situation of the patient, we compare design versions that we create, and we make the decisions for the, for the um, design process. So as you can see, that's what we call the digital patient. And in this digital patient, you have several layers here. And we're gonna go and discuss every single layer. And I, then I'm gonna show you how easy it is to, to uh, manage all these layers. First of all, we start with the intraoral scan, upper lower, right? So we have the upper lowers. It happens that we have the prep file for, from our patient. The prep file is also calibrated with the uh, original intraoral scan. We do have the CBCT bone from the patient. We do have the facial scan from the patient. And now whatever we need to do in the design process, in the, um, in the decision process, right? Having all these files accessible really with one click and having all these um, layers of, of uh, 3D objects 
it's very easy for us to, for example, to analyze the situation of the patient and to make the right decisions and visualize, of course, um, also for the patient, our idea of a treatment, right? So upper, lower intraoral scan. That's a digital, that's a digital prep. So we didn't destroy uh, Samia's beautiful thief, right? We just prepped her thief digitally so that we have an example here to um, superimpose with, um, with the lowers and create smiles design over the prep. We do have the CBCT bone, which I'm gonna show you we can uh, use for uh, smile design, for making the decision regarding gingivectomies and so on. Then we have, um, then we have, people are calling me. Uwe, attend the Zoom call or I'll call you later. <laughs> so, and then we have, um, then we have um, the, um, uh, the, the, the facial scan, of course, the prep, and we have the design. As you can see, we have here several, several layers, several versions of our design. And whatever I decide for my patient, whatever I design for my patient, it's accessible with one click, moving the slider from version five to version four. So if I do have a patient and I have created several designs for the patient, several, uh, I simulated several treatments for the patient, right? Prep, non-prep veneers um, uh, with the CBCT gingivectomies. What I can do is I can simulate by displaying all my versions uh, of, of uh, designs in in this digital patient. So I don't work with projects anymore. I don't care it's a, if it's a 3D smile project, 2D smile project, that I don't care if I have five versions of my designs because everything comes into one, over one roof, the digital patient, right? And the digital patient is patient documentation plus calibration. And it's super easy to, to create a digital patient using the, the technologies that we have developed in, in our, um, in our SmartVibe platform. So that's the digital patient. Biggest change, you create a, you create a, a project, patient files, You add all the files, all the digital records from your patient in the boxes, then you calibrate and you get the digital patient. And we work with the digital patient when it comes to smile simulation, smile designs, 3D smile designs, mock-up, final restorations, whatever you choose to do with the patient. Of course, then we have the smile simulation and the 3D smile design with complete new workflows, automated, quick, very, very, easy to use because the vision of my, of, uh, of my new platform is to make, to simplify the workflows, to automate the workflows in a way that you don't need to fight or struggle with the technology. If you have a simple workflow, if this workflow is based on AI and automations and you get very, very easy and fast your smile design done, and you eventually can adjust little details, you can focus on the patient and you can focus on the discussion with the patient. You don't, want, you don't need to struggle with the technology and you don't need to uh, learn for weeks and practice for months uh, just to be able you know, to, um, uh, 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 to manage the software and to manage the platform to create beautiful smiles. That's the, the most important thing for me. You need time for your patient. And that's just a tool that makes it possible for you to get the time to talk to the patient and just easily do designs, change designs, present 
the digital patient with different treatments, with different proposals, and visualize everything what you, what you tell the patient with this tool. Then we have the CBCT and DICOM that's already done. The prototype is working perfectly. It's going to be available in the next, in the next uh, release. So you are going to, you are going to have um, in your, um, you're going to have in, 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 on three devices, you are going to have the, um, the CBCT uh, viewer and you are going to have the CBCT annotation tools, and you are going to be able to export the bone as a 3D object and then integrate this bone into your smile design procedures. And I'm going to show you why that's so cool and why is that so important. Because what we want to do is to reduce the guest workflows and the guest procedures when it comes to smile design. We want you to design as accurate as possible. And when we have all these files available, STLs, CBCTs, uh, um, the facial scans, uh, preps, whatever we have, the digital patient makes it possible to calibrate all these files once and then use them for every single step of the design procedure and every single step of the uh, this, uh, um, um, uh, uh, decision making, right? Because we have this file and these informations are so important and so valuable in the process of smile design, we need all this information available with one click. In one second, I need to see everything what is important for my design. Good. So that's uh, the patient documentation, the digital patient, and um, all these files. So now, um, Jogo, what do you want me to do? Um, so let me show you, let me show them how, um, how we get started, right? Okay, perfect. I yeah, I yeah. think it's really important um, for you guys to understand that um, my design um, sometimes doesn't require you to have the patient's entire documentation. You can start with a simple frontal facial picture of a patient to initiate your design process. So let me show you here. I have um, some. Oh, that's, a, that's, that's a good point, Jogo. Just, just a, a little remark here. Yeah. Um, of course, you can start very simple with one picture. But what is the big difference to all other system in the world? And that was so important for me to, to make it simple. Whatever you do, however you start your treatment or your simulations or your design process, it doesn't matter because when you work and create projects, all the files that you calibrate, they come into the digital patient. If you start with a design, the design has as a procedure, a picture, eventually an STL, a calibration project, and then the design. So all these four projects come into or go into the digital patient. So whatever you do, you always at the end get the digital patient. You can start with the digital patient like the initial situation, or you can start with the smile design. It ends into the digital patient. And that makes the file management so easy that it doesn't matter what you do and how to start. So let's start with one picture, super simple. Um, um, simulation, right, of, uh, of a first appointment. And from there, you can just build on top of, of your picture all the projects that you need to do. So you don't need to restart with zero or from the beginning just to continue with the small design procedures. Let's, let's do it. Awesome. So let me, let me uh, share my screen here with you guys. Oh, yeah. Let me stop sharing. Yeah. Okay, All right, I'm stepping out, but I want you guys to see it, right? Okay, yeah. So once you download um, your Smiify on your app store, all you have to do is to tap on the menu, which is right on top left corner of your screen. 
you will go to new patient. You will select 2D Smile Design powered by AI here on the second option. You can take a picture of the patient straight from your iPad or iPhone. All you have to do here, tap on this plus sign under full smile and tap on take picture. So you guys- Tanya, hi. <laughs> Didn't see you yeah. for a long time. <laughs> so what I have here, guys, is a ring light. So you don't have to have, you know, beautiful soft box uh, just like this. Uh, you can start small, if you, even if you have a small practice. You get a small ring light so you can have a better quality picture. And make sure that you have the patient against a white or black wall. Okay. So no flowers in the in the back of the patient. No, um, no office. No nothing. Right. Just a uniform background. That's the best. True. Yeah. And like, make sure that you're not taking a picture of the patient. And not in the chair. The patient no, lies in the chair like this, and you take a picture. No, just go on the on the, the, the wall. That's the worst. Please don't <clears> do that. Yeah. Make sure the patient is standing up in a natural head position. Just so you're looking at. Um, you see here, Sonia, right now. Center the patient's head into, into the middle of the screen. Make sure the patient is looking straight at the camera. Big wide smile with the mouth slightly open. And take the picture. Thank you, Sonia. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so here we have, guys, um, a frontal facial picture of our patient which really helps us to better understand not only the patient's dental structure and smile curvature, but also the patient's facial components. What is the goal of SmileFi? It's to deliver a facially driven harmonic smile. So how do we start? We start by taking a proper picture of our patient. I will tap on use photo and right here at the bottom, AI, Smile simulation. The next step is very simple, but it's the most important step. It's where you place the teeth outline over the patient's existing teeth. And that is uh, a way for you to understand what your patient is looking for and also gives you a better understanding of how to proceed with the treatment plan that you are proposing to your patient. I can zoom in, I can move my smile outline. I can change here the curvature. I can set the height, the proportions. I can check on my patient's facial analysis. And this is a very cool tool that we have here in the app. By tapping on facial flow, I'm able to understand what side of my patient's face is the most dominant side, which like it's, it's like the, the bigger side, right? And to where my facial midline is going compared to my patient's dental midline, along with other features here that we have um, in this facial analysis. You would tap on generate smile. Sorry. Yeah. So in the first step, when you when you get the smile frame in the first screen, the smile frame is calculated by the uh, AI module, right? And it gives you the size of the teeth, the the smile curve in 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 an optimal in an optimal version of uh, based on the facial characteristics, right? And now. Sometimes you don't need to change anything, but sometimes you need to change the smile frame and adjust a little bit to, to the patient, uh, to your new patient situation, right? So the size usually is very, very close to a final adjustment. The smile curve is also calculated pretty accurate, but of course you need to adjust based on, on uh, facial characteristics and your patient eventually the position of the smile frame and of course the buckle corridor and all these other little details that uh, the artificial intelligence module right now is not able to calculate for you because we need 
1 million pictures to, <laughs> to do this properly, right? So we don't have enough gummy smiles, uh, but the automatic calculation is very, very close to an ideal and beautiful result. And just look at that. Um, because if I tap next, the artificial intelligence will get already give me a suggestive smile. But before I go there, let's dive into clinical just a bit. Based on this picture, when I set my smile curvature, look what I find. I found that the patient's right canine, right, which is on the left side of the picture, is shorter than the patient's left canine, which is on your right side of the picture. Before uh, we, we were talking to her, she didn't even mention that. She was only worried about her two laterals. But by designing it, you are able to visualize, you have a better vision of your static treatment plan. Let me now tap on next. All I have to do here is to make sure that my uh, lips are properly marked. So my simulation looks more natural to do. So I just tap here on mark lip here at the bottom. And here I have my first smile design powered by our, the artificial intelligence. It takes me like 30 seconds to do it. And it's, it gives you a lot of value when you show this type of service to your patient whenever they come into your practice. Of course, I'm very picky. I'm sure you are as well. So you can always make your own changes if you would like so. Just tap on Smile Harmony and you can change the teeth position. You can change the occlusal plane. You can change the midline and you can select different teeth shapes. What is a good thing here? The good thing is that the smile design that you see here can be replicated into a reality. Of course, along with all of your other clinical findings, along with your x-rays, along with your intraoral scans, you send this information to your lab so the lab can have a visual reference to what you and your patient agreed on. You tap on next. And here you have your initial smile design. What I like about it is that you can show this image to your patient by sending them a before and after picture here at the bottom you tap on before and after you, and you automatically get a before and after picture. So you can send it to your patient. So you can send it to your lab. So you can send it to um, other doctors who are involved in this process. This is the first step for you to engage your patient, understand your patient's desire and understand how to proceed with your aesthetic treatment plan. Save the case. And now you have all this information here in your iPad, iPhone, or MacBook. Continuing the treatment plan, you can add an intraoral scan for more accuracy, a CBCT um, in our next version, and also deliver the 3D mockups, the digital mockups, a 3D version of that to place on a patient's mouth so they can do a smile test drive. Simple as that, beautiful as that. All you have to do now is to come on board and initiate your smile design journey with us. Ralph, you're on mute. Okay. Okay, so now. Um, let me show you the whole, uh, like uh, a more, um, yeah, comprehensive planning and more, uh, we start with a simple picture and, um, 
so let me let me select the case it's a beautiful case from um, um, just for you to visualize how we built the projects on top of each other instead of, of starting all the time from from zero uh, so we do have a picture and we create a small simulation um, I do have a gummy smile. I see I'm correct with the gummy smile. I correct my smile curve. I correct here the ratio of my smile. That's good. The buckle corridor is not bad actually, right? Uh, no, that's good. I think that's okay. I'm gonna turn off the symmetry um, and create the smile curve um, a little bit in a different in a so it's not symmetric and that's the, the the first step with the smile frame and here we go we create the first version of the smile now i see because of the of the red um, color of the lip i see i can adjust a little bit the, the lip better. As you can see, the lip is already marked by the AI module, so you don't need to mark the lip. It's just uh, depending on the picture, depending on the red color of the lip and the gums, uh, eventually you need to readjust uh, the position of the, of the points so that we get a, a clean uh, lip line, right? And we can here generate a lot of smile if we want to by just clicking on generate and now we can compare a lot of uh, different uh, uh, different templates in our smile design i just uh, recognize now i do have a demo version not the the release version so that's why the gums are not matching or fitting sometimes so in the next section we have the smile harmony the smile harmony is a section that is in, in my opinion, very powerful because first of all, you can change the shapes. You can change the form of the shapes on the Jan Haito shapes. You can select the F8, for example. You can also display the colors in the smile or the shapes. And now you can compare how the final smile looks like when you change the shapes. I'm gonna stay with F8 because the F8, it's, it's pretty good. And one of my favorite features and what I like is the dominance of the smile. So monotonic, you see the laterals are on the smile curve, exactly the same length like the centrals, or you create the smile a little more dominant by reducing the height of the, the laterals, right? And that's a beautiful and simple way to create an edgy smile for your patient and compare from monotonic to dominant super simple and super um, easy and it, it has a huge impact of on the on the um, uh, how the smile is actually at the end the energy the the is the smile edgy enough um, is the patient young so the dominance is a really really important component for the facial harmony and and, and um, uh, the, the energy of the smile this frame section, of course, you are free now to uh, change, of course, um, uh, shape by shape, or you can use the, the smile frame changes, and then you still can, um, you can move the smile frame up and down, you can uh, adjust all the teeth as a group, um, adjust the buckle corridor, that's super important to make sure that the buckle corridor is actually adjusted uh, based on your patient situation, right? Uh, there is no rule like the anteriors where you say the central width is 100%, 70%, 50% from the uh, central height. So it's, uh, it's a little bit more um, dynamic and, and uh, you need to adjust the buckle corridor based on, on, the, face, on the patient's uh, situation. Also, depending on what canines did you use or mix, you can change the rotation of, of the posteriors. And it's also a beautiful way to check your design. Uh, you see, it's, um, it's very, very cool to make sure that you get the accurate uh, visualization of, uh, of your 
uh, smile that you envision for your patient. Of course, colors you can add, oops, you can add uh, yellow tones, you can um, uh, add brightness, you can change the brightness for the posteriors, you can um, play with the colors and bring, uh, you know, your design very close to a good result. Let me see, I can change also the, the colors of, of, uh, of the teeth. That's more, the light reflections are more, um, visible here we do have light reflection but it looks more like like uh, maybe composite veneers or something um, and then in the advanced option you can go and you can change all your design uh, one by one so your teeth you can change your teeth one by one you can change the position the height the rotation whatever you want so what is the backstory of this patient? The backstory of this patient is she came into Felipe Saliba uh, dental office, amazing aesthetic dentist from uh, Rio de Janeiro. She wants veneers. Um, her teeth are too short. She wants veneers. She wants a big, beautiful smile. We can do the smile simulation and um, we can do the smile simulation and start with an idea, show the patient, yes, if we change your teeth, you can look better. Your smile has more energy, more, uh, it's, it's different. It's, it, it's in harmony with your face, but it was just a guess, right? So we just put the shapes in the face of the patient and now we have a beautiful simulation, but it's just a guess. It doesn't have anything to do with the treatment or it doesn't have anything to do with, uh, with, uh, with the treatment plan. For that, we're gonna open the patient's files. And as I mentioned before, when we add several files to the patient and we calibrate these files, we get a digital patient. So in order to be able to design better, to have a better idea of the treatment, we're gonna add the STL to the design. Now, I do have the design already done, so I don't need to redesign my stuff, right? So. I just need to calibrate my STL, my intraoral scan with the picture. I set three points on the picture and three points on the STL. Like this, if, if my points are precise enough, I'm gonna get a very nice calibration. Let me see, close, close but not perfect you need to make sure that the points that you set on the picture are very precise and very clean and um, very close to, to the points that you set on the intraoral scan. If not, you do have the, the option to calibrate manually your, um, your STL, so the intraoral scan, and um, make sure that it matches with the, with the anteriors. If the posteriors don't match, it's because of the distortion of the picture. So depending on the lens, you get a distorted, uh, the sides of the picture are more distorted. That's why sometimes you don't get the perfect calibration for your uh, posteriors. You don't worry because if you design 3D, you design 3D over the STL anyway, and the picture is important for your aesthetic harmony canine to canine. Of course, you're gonna see also the posteriors, but the, the idea of the, um, of the smile design is uh, can I to can. Now, we save the calibration, right? We have the picture, we had the intraoral scan, we have uh, calibrated both files and suddenly I do have a digital patient because I have two files and a calibration project. If I open now my smile simulation, I have in my smile simulation my intraoral scan. There we go, all right? I have my intraoral scan. I do have now more or more accurate insights about the design, but not precise enough. So I, um, I can go to my advanced option. I can now um, adjust my posteriors, for example. I adjust my posteriors. It's a much, much better uh, 
position of my smile design, but, and I can start thinking about the treatment plan and I see already it's, um, it's about a gingivectomy case, right? So um, I can visualize and uh, talk to my patient and, and show beautifully that um, it's not about veneers here. We need to make sure that first we get here the right information for your aesthetic treatment. So I'm okay. I see the STL, but I'm still not sure what's gonna be the final design, what's gonna be the final uh, treatment. So I save my case. I get a second version, a much more precise version of my, of my um, um, design, but it's not enough. So I need to go deeper into my thinking. I open the patient files and I add to my patient files the CBCT model. Same game, I calibrate the picture, the intraoral scan and the CBCT model. So already calibrated CBCT model. Same procedure, three points on the CBCT. Okay. Where is my CBCT? Oh, here. Okay, so let me. Okay, three points. Very precise, three points on the CBCT. Three points on the intraoral scan, and then I get my calibration more or less uh, precise, depending on how precise I put the points and set the points in the, into a three D um, on the, on a three D object. It's um, it's easy, but it requires a little bit of uh, of uh, um, not training, but you need to be just very, very uh, precise when you when you put the points. So as you can see, I didn't put the points very, very precise, but I calibrate now my intraoral scan with um, with my CBCT manually and make sure that it matches properly. I have here the opacity. So no, just one click. Okay, that's, uh, no, I'm not happy. So let me calibrate more manually. Here we go. I am happy. No, I'm not. Let me see. Oh, very close. It looks close. So as you can see, it's um, you need to be very careful with the, with the three points. Otherwise, you of course you can go back and set the three points again and then try to recalibrate. But um, the idea is to get, of course, the best calibration with the intraoral scan and with the CBCT, so that we have more uh, more important information in our procedure in our design procedure. So that looks good now. And I'm saving the case. So I have now my patient, digital patient um, updated. So I have a picture, an intraoral scan and the CBCT. I open now my second version of the smile design. And you see here, you have the preview. So you don't, if you don't remember what was the version, what was the design, you have here the before and after picture. So you just click on it and you can review your design in, in this uh, way. I'm gonna open the smile simulation version two because that was with the intraoral scan and it was just a 
step more precise. And here we go. I go to my frame an advanced option. And what do I see here? I do have the STL. I do have the intra the intraoral scan and the CBCT. And let's adjust the design now on the CBCT. Now I see the bone margin. Now I see much more details that I didn't see with the, with the intraoral scan right here. Um, I can adjust now everything much, much better. I see the bone margins, I see the size, I see everything what I need to know when I this, this, decide now how to design. Okay. So very precise. Uh, that's good. Intraoral scan. And now I see here is the real size of what I can do. Here is a very good uh, visualization of the treatment. And now I can show my patient if we go with the gingivectomy, that's going to be the result. So there is no more guessing when it comes to the height of the centrals, of the laterals, and so on. That's possible, right? In the next screen, we have integrated the measurements. Super easy. You don't need to measure the patient anymore because we have the intraoral scan. Having the intraoral scan, we can go and um, set the measurement. We have a ruler, and here we go. We have here three point eight millimeters. Um, so we, we know, we get an idea about the gingivectomy, 3.2. Uh, what do we have here? Oops, nope. Ah, here, okay. Uh, 2.45, 2.5, it's, it's a good way to move forward with the treatment planning thinking and um, to measure, to create a more technical documentation about the treatment, to know also what is the size, for example, of the central incisor that is possible. And the size is 11.3, a lot of tools that are super easy to use and we save the case right? We save the case and we have, again, in our digital patient, we have an additional layer with the uh, uh, CBCT. Now, our patient is super interested and our patient says, I like it, let's go and do a mock-up. We, then we go and we select the third version of the smile simulation. And here we go, we're gonna create a mock-up. And I wanna show you how easy it is to create a mock-up. And um, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna put myself under a challenge because I like challenges. So I want, of course, the vision is to, to offer your patient the mock-up in the first appointment. So, you have a chair side solution with the SmileFi platform. It's super easy to use. It's fun, it's easier, it's faster than any, any other uh, uh, solutions. So why not creating a workflow for 3D that is super easy? Profile, frontal, occlusal view, perfect uh, intraoral calibration. Adjustments. The innovation, Oh, okay. That's my. Oh yeah, yeah. That's my. Uh, that's my. Um, uh, that's my demo. Demo version. I need to restart it again. So um, the 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 huge difference, the big innovation, I think, for three D smile design is a, a concept that I have created right now, and it's called the three D smile frame. The three D smile frame is 
uh, let me show you. Let's go here, for example. The 3D smile frame is something that is, is very easy to use. And it gives you really the technology to create a smile design, a 3D smile design and mock-up in five minutes. The 3D smile frame is like the 2D smile frame, but it's a 3D object, a 3D smile frame that actually um, create the 3D smile design immediately based on the height, width, and occlusal plane. So you can set the width of the central, the lateral, and the canine with the sliders right here. Because all the, the, distal, the distal lines of your teeth are not random. You want to set them um, before you generate a smile. So we set the distal lines of the smile design. And then we create automatically the 3D smile frame. And that's the 3D smile frame, as you can see, right? So the size, the angulation, everything is in place. And from here, we go and we design. Now, the design that I have created for her was over the virtual prep. So the design is not so buckled. That's why when I go on my, um, all the files that I have, I'm gonna hide the CBCT, I'm gonna hide the, um, the, the original scan, right? That's the original scan. And that's the prep. And I see that actually my design is over the prep. So I can go on the four views. That's super easy to design because I see that the, um, I see the, the design from all angulations, frontal, super easy, what we call 12 o'clock, occlusal. And the wish of Jogo to have, of course, and it makes sense, the, the lower jaw in the smile design, because otherwise you're going to design and your design is going to be more or less um, useless when the, when the patient breaks even the, even the, the mocha, because the uh, yeah, it's not related like, to the lowers, right? One thing that, yeah, one thing that we have to, to understand is that, you know, our goal here is to create the most predictable mock-up as possible, which will save you time, right? Because you don't have to sign up to the lab to create your mock-up anymore. Um, it will save you money because it's very cost, costly when you send um, your, to your lab for them to create the mock-up for you. And you also like to take ownership of your, of your whole project. However, we always have to combine our digital technology with our dental knowledge. And now by having the lowers, even though there's, it's, it doesn't have the, the design on the lowers yet, it gives you a better perspective on where to position those teeth. So when you place on a patient's mouth, all you have to do is to make your you know, small occlusion uh, adjustments or maybe like add something here and there with some flowable scan and send it to the lab for final restorations. Yeah, and and there is also, you know, the, the, um, the way to educate the patient when it comes to the aesthetic treatment, because you do have everything what you need to visualize the issue to explain to the patient the problem and then to explain why you decide the treatment the way you decide. Because if you show your patient here in this beautiful occlusal view, right? In this beautiful occlusal view, why you just cannot put uh, veneers on the upper jaw and that's not gonna be enough to secure the quality and to secure the veneers over a long time, then you have to discuss the lower, um, the lowers and eventually ortho, right? And you can visualize that way everything super, super easy and, um, and show how your upper design is gonna crash on the lowers. Upper veneers are gonna crash on the lowers. So that uh, let's say uh, just veneers are not gonna be 
are not going to be enough for for a treatment here, right? And um, then we have something that I I think that's going to be really really super nice for for you and for everybody. The vision, as I mentioned before, the vision is to give you a system that allows you to focus on the patient and communication. No more struggling with the technology, no more struggling with very complicated softwares that the workflows are so complicated that you, you just need to practice months to, to, uh, to be able to use them. Now, we have the patient, we have the design, we have the templates. So I have the option to mix the templates without redesigning. And I think there's something beautiful because if your patient doesn't like the centrals or if your patient doesn't like the canines, you need to redesign the whole thing. But right now you just go and you select different canines, for example, from M5. And you see, you don't need to redesign anything. They are just in place. If you go with the centrals from M5, you get the centrals from M5. You don't need to redesign. So if you want to go to the um frontal smile right like this or to the four views better okay frontal view um you can compare your design with different shapes and it's something unique in the world of dentistry you don't need to redesign anything you just can compare and your patient is gonna tell you i like it or i don't and that's a such important aspect of the patient communication because when it comes to a beautiful smile design and when we talk about harmony that's objective the most beautiful smile that we design and your patient is going to say oh, i don't know maybe i don't know i don't like the canines what should we do should we spend another week the redesigning the mock-up or the 3d smile design communicating with the with the dental lab uh, telling them my patient doesn't like the canines no i just go into my platform and i select different canines and i show these are tipped canines these are flat canines these are waved canines i i don't know these are other canines right which one do you like I like the flat ones, let's go with the flat ones. And it's done, right? It's done. And then you can export version one, version two, version five and create five mockups in one minute. That gives us the flexibility to improve the communication with the patient and save time at the end of the day because I don't need to guess what the patient wants, I can visualize. And the patient gives me immediately the feedback. F19, look at these canines. They are beautiful. These canines look also very, very special. I, I worked on this calibration for months and I just upload now um, all these, the new templates, calibrated templates so that we can just um, mix them the way we mix them, right? Um, F01, with this, I see a lot of, of, uh, of these canines, right? People like them. Um, Flat canines, they don't have a teeth, or we go with the tip canine. Yes, G01, I like them more. We are flexible to create smiles, combining templates, finding the right harmony, finding the right, uh, finding the right um, smile for our patient and do the uh, experimenting with, with our patient. That's the digital patient. And then of course the, 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 um, the full, all views, um, facial scan, um, that's the free view that was supposed to be the, the occlusal view. So you can, you see your smile in, in from every single angulation. Uh-huh, here is a problem, okay. I'm gonna select my smile and correct my smile. Okay, good. And here we go. We do have a very, very simple to use tool and that's our goal. We're not gonna stop here. It's gonna be easier, more automated, more comprehensive, uh, lower design function, the CBCT integration, 
uh, annotation tools for CBCT, diagnostics tools. We are going to uh, connect with all scanners companies, so you are going to be able to scan and send the scanners directly to the app. Um, we're going to connect CBCT uh, machines to uh, so that you get the files here directly and you can use them. The digital patient is going to be the most important component of the future. We have the digital patient, all the files calibrated, and I can access them with one click. Then the files are valuable. If they are just somewhere in a folder, they don't have any value for me when I need to design and I need to make that decision and I have and I have to access them immediately. But here I can see that. Here I see everything what is important and what is missing, right? Now we have the reduction um, visualization of the teeth. And um, here we go. Where is the prep? Yeah. So here is the, no, here is the design. And here is the, I can reduce the, the um, opacity, right? I reduce the opacity and then I, um, I see my, how much do I need to reduce and the prep and all this stuff. So I hope that's fun. I hope we're gonna start a new, a new chapter of small design workflows. Um, I hope we are gonna create more smiles and we're gonna be focused more on harmony and smiles and uh, creating this, this uh, value for our patients instead of uh, struggling with technologies. That's my final word. So guys, I have um, put it here in the chat, our link to our courses. As um, I know, digital dentistry wasn't taught uh, in dental school. So that's something that we have to learn on the go. And we have created a tailored um, courses for you that is um, clinically dri driven, but that teaches you the smile design process. Not only that 2D design, the smile design that you saw um, uh, live here with the patient that I showed you, but also the entire workflow, everything that Ralph um, showed you guys today. The, um, the digital patient, uh, meaning like the 3D design on the digital patient will be available at the end of the month, but you can start exploring now the smile design using the photos, my design using the uh, intraoral scan. And you can also create your digital patient to do your facial analysis, all right? So, Again, the link is on the chat. Uh, it's free to use uh, during the first 14 days. And um, if you guys have any further questions, just uh, please contact support at smilefy.com. Right, Ralph, I wanna thank you uh, for showing. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody for being with us. Perfect. Thank you guys, everybody. We have here um, almost 200 doctors. We have doctors on, on Facebook as well. You guys are always very special to us. Thank you so much. And I, you guys have an amazing weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.